In this video, I'd like to show how to use Darkmark to annotate video frame and how to export the Darknet files. I'm using the Darkplate dataset and project from GitHub. The links to everything I use is in the video description. I assume at this point that Darknet, Darkhelp, and Darkmark have been installed. I have another video that describes how to do that. I will link to that one below as well. First thing I'll do here is clone the Darkplate project. There are three subdirectories. Media, which contains two example videos which we'll use in a moment to test out inference. NN is the neural network files, as well as the images and annotations that were used to build that neural network. Source, which contains the single C++ source file for the Darkplate project. Let's build the Darkplate project and run it against the two demo videos to see the output. Now we run the newly built application against the videos. There are two example videos included with Darkplate. M1 and M2. At the bottom you can see what Darknet and YOLO discovered. At the top is those annotations processed by the Darkplate application. And then I use OpenCV to uh, just draw a semi-transparent label on top of the image. The second video is very similar to the first, uh, but it's a little bit shorter. Next, we'll take a look at the neural network. All of the files are in the NN directory. The weights file created by Darknet, the Darknet YOLO CFG file, the configuration for the neural network, the names file, which contains the names of all the classes. The chart.png file is created by Darknet during training. Technically, it isn't part of the neural network and isn't necessary, but I've included it in the Darkplate project to give people an idea of how effective training was. And finally, the set01 directory, which contains all of the video frames and annotations which were used to train the neural network. Let's assume you have your own license plate images you'd like to add to the project and annotate. To do this, we'll create a new subdirectory called set02 to store our images. For this example, I have a single image I'm going to add to this new directory. Now I start Darkmark and I'll add the NN subdirectory within Darkplate as a neural network project. Darkmark tries to be helpful and creates a .names file using the same name as the subdirectory. To prevent any confusion, I'm going to delete this file as we already have a, a .names file that we should use for Darkplate. When we load the neural network project, Darkmark detects that images have already been annotated. Click OK to import those annotations into Darkmark. This is Darkmark's main editor window. From here we can annotate images, review annotations, and create all the necessary files to train the neural network with Darknet. Because Darkplate has 37 classes, the first thing I'd like to do is increase the size of the scroll field on the right side of the window. Pressing the letter E brings up the settings dialog. By default, all images are shown in alphabetical order, meaning our new image in set 02 will be at the end of the list of images. You can use left and right arrow keys to move between the images, as well as home and end to move to the start or the end of the list. Press page down to move to the next image that has not yet been annotated. 
This will bring you to the image we added to set 02. To zoom in to an image, you can use spacebar or use plus and minus on the numeric keypad to fine tune exactly how much to zoom in to the image. For this example, I'll zoom in to 400% to help me easily annotate the license plate. Click and drag the mouse over a single character or digit. Once an area has been marked, press C or Enter on the keyboard to select the class. Note that each class has a numeric value as well, so you can use the digits on the keyboard to switch to the class you need. In this case, this needs to be annotated as the letter B. Repeat the process for all characters and digits on the license plate. Since we also have a class to represent license plates, once we're finished with the individual characters, we select the entire license plate. I know that class is number 0, so I press 0 on the numeric keypad. Once finished, you can press spacebar to toggle zoom and see if there are other objects to be annotated in the image. There are several view options you can toggle. The lowercase letter B changes the bold setting. The uppercase letter B changes how much background shading is added to each annotation. At this point, if I want to quickly review annotations, I press home to go to the first image, and then I press the letter Z. This will zoom in to the first annotation. Every time I press Z after that, it will focus on a new annotation or switch to the next annotated image if necessary. This way I can use Z to go through the entire list of images. Darkmark has another option to help review annotations prior to building the neural network. Right mouse click on the image and select Review Marks. This will build and display a table of all annotations in the project. Note there is a different tab for each class in the neural network. The table should make it easy to scroll through all the annotations to ensure that objects are not annotated incorrectly. Once reviewing is done, the next step is to generate all of the darknet files required to train the neural network. Right mouse click and select Create Darknet Files. There are many options in this window, but don't be overwhelmed. Most settings can remain at their default values. What is important to check for this network? The template we want to use is YOLO v4 Tiny. Click on this row to pick from one of many configuration templates. The dimensions of this network are 608 by 608. The default size for YOLO v4 Tiny is normally 416 by 416, but I chose to increase it since the individual characters and digits in the 1080p video frames are quite small. Subdivisions is driven by the amount of memory available on your GPU. In my case, with YOLO v4 Tiny running at 608 by 608, I'm limited to a value of 4 for subdivisions. Max batches is set to 40k for this test run. With 37 classes, once I have more images in the project, this value will need to be increased to probably around 80k. Resizing the 1080p frames to 608 by 608 isn't useful for the dark plate project. The characters and plates are too small once the image is resized to 608 by 608. Instead, I plan on using image tiling, so I'll remove the resize option and select both tiling and random crop. Note the help button at the bottom. This will open the Darkmark website and display additional information on some of these options. Once you click OK, Darkmark will prepare all the images, annotations, and create all the files required by Darknet to train the neural network. These files are saved in the project's root directory, uh, the same place as the project's weights and names files. You should now have everything needed to train the dark plate neural network. Press Escape until you are back at the Darkmark launcher window. Note how the number of markup files matches the number of images. 
I leave you with the output generated by the dark plate demo application running with the M1 video. As always, see the YouTube video details for links. Leave your comments below or on the Darknet Yellow Discord.